for me, I think the biggest thing that football taught me was how to overcome adversity. At some point in your life, you're going to have some tough times. You have to have that next play mentality. That cohesiveness and that working together, that's really something special that you can't get in a lot of other areas. When you practice that and you live that in other phases of your life, it, it, it becomes second nature because all you know how to do is fight. It's not an easy game. If it were easy, everyone would do it. You start to appreciate the, the smaller contributions that people make. You don't just look at the big one because you knew it took six or seven other guys who are unsung. And, uh, you know, you, you can't take shortcuts and be successful. Doing what they do to make it possible for the guy getting the press clippings or whatever it might be. In this game, whether it's as a coach or a player. So, um, I would certainly say that, um, you know, you definitely got uh, a very quick lesson in how to overcome adversity playing football. And don't forget to check out and order your copy of our latest book, Stiff Arming Football Myths. You can find this available in both paperback and PDF form on our website at footballgameplan.com slash books. <laughs>
kickoff coverage, that first block that you have, whatever it might be. And, and I couldn't think of anything better to do uh, to fill that void that, that you have as a football player than, than to get into coaching. You get a chance to release a lot of emotion that you otherwise have no place to release. There's nothing else like that. Again, the relationships you build and, and the, thing, the people you're around and, and watching the guys compete, um, not just on the football field, but in life after they get done playing. Uh, it's, it's just a, an amazing game. Up front defensively, the Cardinals are stout. Calais Campbell is coming off a Pro Bowl season and has quietly been a consistent performer over the course of his eight-year career. Arizona last year got steady play from 10-year veteran Frosty Rucker, and the hope is that he and fellow vet free agent signee Corey Redding, coming from the Indianapolis Colts, can continue to defy father time. Rookie fourth-round pick Rodney Gunther out of Delaware State is versatile enough to play anywhere along that defensive line, and he'll see a lot of playing time, especially with the loss now of Corey Peters. I've always been a fan of Alameda Tiamo. I think he'll do fine replacing Dan Williams, who departed via free agency. Now, both Ed Stinson and rookie undrafted free agent Xavier Williams out of Northern Iowa provide good depth. And I was shocked that Williams went undrafted, so the Cardinals definitely got themselves a steal. This is the lifeblood of any 3-4 defense, and Arizona went out and added a good mix of veterans and rookies. Free agency brought in Sean Weatherspoon and Lamar Woodley, while the draft yielded guys like Marcus Golden out of Missouri and Shaq Riddick out of West Virginia. Out of that quartet, Witherspoon looks like the only starter provided he can stay healthy, while the rest are expected to be key contributors. They'll pair up with good bets in Lorenzo Alexander and Matt Shaughnessy, along with a few talented young prospects in Alex Okafer, Kevin Minter, and Kareem Martin. Those three guys, I believe, are the future at the second level for Arizona. Look for Mentor and Martin to make significant strides in their game. Kenny Demons is a guy that you also should keep an eye on, as well as undrafted free agent Gabe Martin out of Bowling Green. I think this is a deep and talented group, and new defensive coordinator James Betcher has a ton of personnel grouping options at his disposal. I'm a huge fan of the Cardinals secondary, and I always have been. They have versatile ball hawks back there to get the job done. Contrary to popular belief and his critics, Patrick Peterson is a top-notch corner who's coming off his fourth straight Pro Bowl season. Losing Antonio Cromartie via free agency means that opposite of Peterson, both Gerard Powers and Justin Bethel will compete for the job. Keep an eye on undrafted rookie free agent Cario Brooks from Adams State as well. Brooks has the talent, and in my opinion, he should make the team. I'm a big fan of the depth and versatility of their safeties. Tyron Matthew, Tony Jefferson, and Deion Buchanan, even Rashad Johnson can play either safety spot. They can blitz, and they possess really good ball skills. This is why this secondary is so dangerous. I would also keep an eye on rookie undrafted free agent Harold jones Porte out of Findlay. He's in the mode of what they already have in Deion Buchanan, and I expect his unit to be really good this season once again. In my opinion, the Cardinals are really good in the kicking department. Kicker Chandler Canizaro was a pleasant surprise last year, going 29-33 of 33 on his field goal attempts, and it'll be interesting to see which punter the Cards decide to go with out of Drew Butler and Dave Zasadale. Both are solid, but I doubt they keep two. The return game will be replacing Ted Ginn, who left via free agency, but look no further than rookie fifth-round pick J.J. Nelson out of UAB to take over. Nelson has game-breaking speed and agility and should do just fine in that role. I have the Cardinals finishing third in the NFC West. This is a strong team that's playing in a very strong and tough division. The offensive line will be better, I believe, and defensively they'll be solid even without Ty Bowles. But there are still some slight question marks about the pass rushing ability from the second level and whether or not Carson Palmer can return to form following his second ACL injury. But even with all of that said, I still think Arizona will be in the mix for the final wild card spot. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Cardinal Fan Forums for always showing football game plan support.